Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. Most of us have seen movies or television shows where sharks have been portrayed as marauders who prey on unsuspecting swimmers or smaller fish in the sea. But many Wild Kingdom episodes illustrate how sharks and other predators are an important part of the food chain in our underwater world. Oceans cover 70% of our planet, yet we still have much to learn about this important ecosystem. Modern technology has enhanced our ability to study the ocean with minimal disruption to their habitat. Human involvement in recent legislation to protect underwater creatures allow for their resurgence. There's more good news to come in the Wild Kingdom, so sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD-TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. The coastal waters of Northern California, in this general area, are filled with a heavy growth of kelp and lined with submerged rocks. This is the habitat of one of our continent's rarest and most interesting animals, the sea otter. Once, because of extensive fur trapping, they nearly became extinct. Now they are protected and extensive conservation studies continue in an effort to rebuild the depleted population. Trapping sea otters alive for study has always been difficult since they become entangled in the nets and drown. Now the California Fish and Game Department has developed a remarkable capture device which eliminates any possibility of death or injury to the animal. The result is adoption of better management procedures for the animal's protection. Recently, participating in the project, we saw the new trapping method in operation. At the same time, we studied the habits of this friendly, fascinating animal. We call our story, The World of the Sea Otter. This ruggedly beautiful coastline can be treacherous to a small boat like ours. Tom Allen is going to drop me off on shore here so I can climb to a high point to try to spot some otters for a behavior study. We've seen several of the otters already this morning, but they were only scattered individuals that were traveling. What we need to locate is an area where the otters are feeding so that we can study this activity later. There's one now in its characteristic eating position, swimming on the surface on its back while it holds an abalone in its front paws and dines on it. There's another performing a remarkably intelligent act. It's breaking open the abalone shell against a rock held on its chest. Sea otters are recognized by scientists as one of the few mammals that have learned by themselves to use a simple tool. By turning over completely in the water, bits of broken shell are washed away. The otter keeps a good grip on the abalone and the rock to keep from losing them. The abalone, a mollusk, is one of the sea otter's most favored foods. We'll observe more of their feeding later. Right now, I'll go back down to the beach so Tom and I can move to the pre-selected area to begin our capture. The jagged rocks of this coastline, both above and below the surface, and the dense growth of kelp in the water form ideal habitat here for the sea otters. They rarely come to shore, but also are rarely more than a mile from it. We're heading out to rendezvous with a larger craft carrying our friends from the California Fish and Game Department. 
they are biologists who have agreed to show Tom and me just how they've been conducting their captures and studies of sea otters in this area. As we get the inflatable boat alongside and secured, we learn that the men here have located some sea otters nearby. The biologists have been watching these otters for some time now and intend to make the capture here. Tom and I are most interested in seeing the peculiar capture device that the game department men have aboard their craft. This revolutionary new trap was developed by Ken Wilson of the California Fish and Game Department and the leader of the otter research project, biologist Paul Wilde. He says the trap operates by divers raising it beneath the floating otter. A trip cord closes the trap mouth as the startled otter dives to escape. To me, this looks like a good capture device. I'm anxious to give it a test underwater with Paul Wilde's assistant on the project, diver Jack Ames. We have two major problems, dense kelp growth to swim through and relatively poor visibility underwater due to murkiness. Paul tells us that the trap works well because he designed it to take advantage of the instinctive reaction of a surfaced sea otter to dive in order to escape potential danger. Since these animals will be keeping an eye on the boat, Jack and I swimming underwater with the trap will be able to get directly beneath the floating otter before it realizes we're nearby, especially if it's busy eating abalone, like this one. Jack is first to be ready for the dive. He makes sure to check his wrist compass to establish the course we'll follow in order to swim underwater directly to a point beneath the floating otter. Otherwise, the otter would be extremely difficult for us to find amid all the kelp, both growing upward from the bottom and floating as debris on the surface. With the trap already reset and handed down to us by Marlin and Paul, we're in business. It's not too heavy and one man could transport it alone, but it's much easier with two. Now we'll see how Paul Wilde has specifically designed this trap to prevent the otter trapped in it from getting drowned. That has always been the greatest problem to overcome in capturing sea otters. Keeping on a direct course to the otter while swimming beneath the surface of the murky kelp-filled waters would be difficult for the divers without a compass. Visibility down here is limited to only about 20 feet or less in most areas. The trap is bulky, but not really difficult for two men to swim with. Jack skillfully keeps us on course with his compass as we weave our way through kelp streamers growing from the bottom. One otter sees us, but then turns away, not really alarmed. There's another, and he's hard to see amid all that kelp. Jack's signal indicates we're now right under our quarry. We've been lucky because so far, the otter is completely unaware of us. When the net comes up from below, it will be too late for an escape dive. The fact that the otter is struggling underwater is its own choice. 
It can surface if it cares to. The trap is being held halfway above the surface, and a balloon, which inflated when the trip cord was pulled, helps to hold it on the surface so that there is no possibility of the animal drowning. We'll get it on the boat as quickly as possible. Despite all the seemingly foolproof characteristics of this trap, the rarity of the sea otter encourages us to take no chances. Paul's concern ever since beginning with the project is sea otter safety. It has been a perfect capture, and no matter how it struggles, it can't drown, nor can it hurt itself. They'll be wise, though, to keep well out of reach of its sharp teeth. It's clear now why the trap is so successful and so valuable in taking otters alive for study or relocation. It won't even be necessary for Paul to remove this adult female from the trap to mark it. We'll only have to keep it in the net long enough to attach the identification tag to her hind foot. I'll pin her down gently but firmly with this cork-filled bag so Paul won't get bitten as he works. He's managed to get one of the heavily webbed hind feet free of the netting. Without a wasted motion, Paul locates the special pliers and expertly attaches the tag. Paul says the webbing is an area of little sensitivity. A yellow tag indicates a female. In a special research log under the identification number of yellow four, the sex of the otter is noted, along with information on where and when it was tagged. This full-grown female is much smaller than an adult male who may be over six feet long and over 80 pounds in weight. Suspended off the deck this way, the otter's weight, minus 15 pounds for the aluminum trap itself, is just about 50 pounds. Now, with the information we needed obtained, the divers have one final job. They will re-enter the water and stay ready to assist the otter in getting free of the netting should she become entangled. Paul always insists on taking every precaution possible to avoid accidents which might hurt or cost the life of one of these fine animals. He's only too aware that these otters were almost extinct 60 years ago. Their repopulation is slow, and every otter is imperative for the recovery. The otter needs no assistance from Tom and Jack. This has been an excellent example of the proper way to catch, tag, and release an animal without injury or even excessive handling. Now as the divers climb back aboard, Paul says we'll head for another area a little distance away where the otters are less likely than these to be wary of us. Paul explains that sea otters do not migrate and tend to have fairly restricted individual range so it is not too difficult to keep track of them and formulate rather accurate estimates of their numbers along this coast. Shortly, Paul and Jack will stop and leave us behind to observe otters while they continue a census of the animals farther up the coast. The California Fish and Game Department keep close watch from this boat on the sea otters wherever they are becoming reestablished. They're quick to note any sudden change in population levels. We reached the place Paul was telling us about, and already we see otters feeding on abalone. As soon as we're in our inflatable boat and Paul and Jack have moved off, Tom and I will see if we can't attract the otters much closer to us.
We brought along some food for them, some squid, clams, and crab, and we'll observe them from both above and below the surface. It took some coaxing on our part, but before long, we were able to attract the otters close to us with our food. Though the otters have moved fairly near to us, so far only the gulls have taken our bait. However, these animals seem to realize we won't harm them and they're becoming bolder. They seem to be ready to begin competing with the gulls for the free meal. They're not entirely unaccustomed to such handouts since Paul often tosses them pieces of squid as Tom is doing now. Looks like one is finally getting the idea. The dexterity of their front paws in feeding is both amusing and fascinating. Though he took the squid, evidently this otter, still carrying a stone, just finished eating a shellfish. We'll see now if I can get it to feed from my hand while I'm in the water. The squid Tom's throwing to me should lure them very close. He took it. I'll try to give the other one a squid too. They don't seem to be afraid of Marlin, so I'll get ready to join him, and maybe we can get them to perform for us under the surface. Marlin's indicating to me he's ready. And while he's feeding them, I'll make sure everything's all right with his air tank and position it where he can quickly slip it on. Tom has given me the bag of food he brought. Hopefully the sight of our bait will draw otters right to our hands underwater as it did on the surface. The otter doesn't seem terribly disturbed that we've invaded his domain. I'll take an observation post on the bottom right here while Tom moves over closer to where those two otters are swimming. They're extremely agile and very graceful underwater. From here, I can see that one of the otters is carrying an abalone to the surface. I've located the other otter, trying to get an abalone attached to a rock. It's incredible to see how even underwater, the otter uses a stone as a tool to batter the shellfish open. Few humans have ever witnessed such a sight as this. It certainly didn't take him long to pound a hole in the middle of the abalone shell and get at the meat. Sea otters rarely fight, but occasionally there'll be a dispute over food. More often than not, the intruder is driven off. He's gotten the whole abalone free now, so that's all I'll see of him for a while. Now I'll try to get one to take a whole clam. It doesn't take long for another otter to spot me with it.
They're very gentle toward me and quite unafraid. They show little hesitation in taking my offering, just as they took Marlin's on the surface. It's phenomenal how these animals open shellfish with a rock. Now here's one hungry for clam who doesn't have a rock. Let's see if he'll take the small rock I brought along. Amazingly enough, he's taken it. And I'm really surprised because I thought it would have to be a rock of his own choosing. Now I'll try a crab. There's one already busy eating, so he's not interested in my offering. There ought to be one around somewhere who's hungry for crab dinner. Here comes one who is. That ought to keep him occupied for a while. Looks like there is another looking for a handout. Sea otters have such enormous appetites that a full-grown male will devour as much as 20 pounds of food each day. So they're always searching for something to eat. Though a man in his greed nearly destroyed these animals, Tom and I share a deep sense of pride in that man has also, against great odds, saved them from extinction and reestablished them here in this undersea world of the sea otter. Now that the revolutionary new trap has been perfected, even closer studies of the sea otters can be made. These magnificent mammals have been rescued from the very brink of total annihilation. With the improved ability to capture them alive and unharmed for relocation or study, conclusions about them can more swiftly and surely be reached. Using the vital information thus gathered, Man can adopt sound measures to live in harmony with the sea otters, so these animals may never again face the threat of extinction. This is just one more encouraging step in the continuing effort to wisely conserve an irreplaceable element of the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.